What's going on folks? Uh, my name is Nick. You're watching The Hungry Handgunner. If you're a first time visitor to the channel, uh, welcome. If you want to stick around and learn more about guns, gadgets, gear, training, all that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. That means a lot. Also, if you're a long time supporter and you like the stuff I'm putting out and you feel like you learned some things, there's going to be a card coming up in the corner right there. Um, that's going to be my Patreon if you guys want to go and help me make videos. That's awesome, especially right now with uh, ammo and all that being all over the place really means a lot, helps me out a lot. I've gone back and forth on whether or not I wanted to make this video and I had a few people reach out to me and say, hey, so-and-so in my family is buying a gun for the first time with everything going on. Or is thinking about getting a gun and doesn't know what to get, etc. So, with that in mind, this is just going to be a um, discussing the merits of each firearm style, different calibers, things like that, for not so much for somebody that's looking to buy a new gun, but for somebody that's never owned a gun, possibly has even been against guns um, and doesn't know what from what and to kind of help them make an informed decision on what would work best, the pros and cons of each style and just kind of covering uh, ammo and you know how easy slash hard, expensive, inexpensive the different calibers can be for that firearm. So uh, hopefully this helps some folks out. Alrighty, let's get started. Alright, so the first one I'm going to start with is um, what I'm using for demo is my Marlin 336C 3030 lever action rifle. Um, what one of the cartridges looks like, it's right there. Uh, the reason I'm starting with this one, they're fairly common, usually pretty inexpensive. Um, they're not scary, they're not tactical looking. And depending on your goals or the reason you're buying a gun in the first place, this may seem like it fits the bill. So if you're one of these people approaching a firearms purchase from the standpoint of I want to be able to put food on the table for my family. Um, this is a good one to get. Now I will say the ammo is uh, moderately expensive. You're going to pay uh, about a dollar a round seems to be the going rate for these cartridges. They're normally sold in 20 round boxes. So as far as stockpiling ammo, that can get pretty expensive pretty quick uh, depending on your expectations for use. This one's tricked out a little bit. I've got a more in-depth video on this gun I will put up there along with some of the accessories and stuff that I have put on here. Um, these are solid guns. They've been around forever. The way they operate, they're lever action. So you just cycle the lever uh, and you chamber around and you do that after each shot. So they're not semi-automatic. Um, this one being chambered in 30-30 holds six rounds. This is actually your magazine here, this bottom tube. Uh, holds six rounds in there. And it's a pretty good gun. Um, it definitely has enough energy if you needed to use it to defend your home that it could be suitable for that task. I will say that if you live further up north something like this as far as brown bears uh, stuff like that <clears throat> debatable effectiveness. For those of us down here in, in the south where the biggest thing uh, four-legged thing we'd have to worry about is a well, black bear then this is plenty of energy for that. So this is not going to be the most tactical weapon in the world. Um, got limited round capacity ammo availability. Uh, it's a common round. It's fairly easy to find. It's just going to be kind of expensive to get. As far as durability, this model here is a late 60s model 3030 and it's still kicking. I'm not obviously not the original owner. Uh, the gun is way older than I am, but it is still in great shape, still functions fine, still is accurate, and it's held up well. That being said, I don't shoot it uh, a whole lot, probably because of the ammo cost, but this definitely could be a viable option if this is what you're looking for. But uh, go ahead and see what we can do. Ah, pulled that shot on the little swinger. <laughs> Rock the hell out of it. So, right, the next one on my list is probably going to be one that a lot of people are going to gravitate towards just because of things they've heard growing up, things they've seen in TV, etc. That's going to be a shotgun uh, of any different variety. I picked this one just because uh, they're very common. This is a Maverick 88 by Mossberg. Very inexpensive gun. Uh, pump action, so cycle the pump brings it around back this one came out of the magazine tube bring it forward it puts the round in the chamber so 
Uh, the projectiles that I've got in here right now, or the, the shells that I've got in here, are buckshot, as you can see the little pellets in there. Uh, this is nine count, I believe it's nine count. It is, uh, nine count double op buck. Very common load, especially for home defense and deer hunting. There are a variety of loads you can get. Yep, I do. I normally keep a couple birdshot rounds here for snake. Um, very tiny little BBs there. That's number eight birdshot. So useful for uh, hunting birds or snakes or that's that. So shotgun is a very versatile gun. Uh, you can load it with slugs, which I don't have any out here with me. It's just basically one big piece of lead, one ounce of lead. So instead of having multiple projectiles that spread out, you have one large projectile. Shotguns do, however, have a lot of misconceptions that go with them. Um, the key one, and perhaps the most dangerous one, is that you don't have to aim. Uh, that's not true. You know, a shotgun, even at distances out to 20 yards, depending on the shells that you're using, can have you know, a pattern that's the size of a, your fist. You know, So if you miss, it's not spreading out like the movies say. And, and you, honestly, for defensive purposes, you don't really want it to. Especially if you live with other people, because any of those pellets that miss poses a hazard to somebody innocent. So, with that in mind, a few things you're going to need to do if you get a shotgun, and that's going to be pattern it. What that means is take some targets, put them out at different ranges, and figure out how different types of ammunition perform out of your shotgun. Uh, what distance they start opening up, etc. And that will help you make decisions as far as what ammunition to get for it. Shotguns are pretty reliable for the most part. Um, there's pump action variants like this where you just pump it to chamber around. There's semi-automatics that automatically will chamber your next round after you pull the trigger. And there's the double barrel and over and under design in which the shotgun is hinged. Uh, normally up here at the receiver, it opens up, you put two shells in, close it. Once you fire those two rounds, you open it back up. Those either kick out or you take the empties out and you put two fresh shells in. So shotgun could be useful. Um, you're gonna suffer from a little bit of reduced range. I shouldn't say a little bit, uh, much reduced range compared to a rifle, but it is very versatile. You can use slugs to hunt things like deer, bear, etc. Buckshot to hunt the same animals. Uh, buckshot for defense purposes. Hell, slugs for defensive purposes if, if that's your thing. Although they do over penetrate um, commonly. So a shotgun is going to take some considerable work to figure out what shells are going to work best for you and at what ranges. So this may not be the answer. Um, this may be a great in addition to gun for you. But if you're only going to have one gun, this wouldn't really get my vote just because you are limited on range. Alright, so we're at a distance of 10 yards. You can see my IDPA silhouette target there. Um, I have three rounds loaded in here. Double out buckshot, sell your and below stuff that I showed you a second ago. So three rounds, a lot of your shotguns are limited to three rounds for hunting purposes. So that's why we're doing three rounds. Uh, not necessarily going to do it very fast, but we're going to fire from the hip at that silhouette and see what we get. All right. All right. So I can tell you right now, I had one halfway decent shot, uh, which was luck, because my other two pretty much went, went wild. All right, now we're about the same distance, but I'm only, I've got three rounds of the double out buck loaded up. I'm gonna show you the difference between firing from the hip and actually aiming down the barrel and using that front bead sight to get the shotgun on target. So here we go. Now the next gun on the list is one that gets demonized quite a bit and that's going to be your AR-15, uh, AK-47. I'm going to lump them all in here. AR-10, things that have a uh, magazine capacity with a substantial number of rounds. This is a standard capacity magazine for this gun. It holds 30 rounds. That's what the gun is designed for. Um, so it's not a high capacity mag per se, but standard capacity. And these guns are popular um, amongst us gun owners for several reasons. Number one, they're light. This gun without the sling and optic flashlight on it weighs 6.9 pounds, or 6 pounds, 6.9, 6 pounds, 9 ounces. It's not a very heavy gun. It's ergonomic. It's easy to use. Uh, there's not much recoil with the round it uses. 
which I should probably show you guys here. Um, this shoots a 5.56 five, slash 2.23 round. And general rule of thumb on those is if it's chambered for 5.56, five, it can safely shoot 2.23. And the other way around, uh, use some caution. So these rifles are modular, they're adjustable. I can take this stock, collapse it, change how far the distance to the length of pull is on it. Um, these are good guns. They're reliable for the most part, as long as you keep them clean, take care of them. Parts are everywhere for them. And for me, uh, this would be absolutely something I would want to have in this situation if I did not have one already. They do require a little bit of training. Um, you know, I've got a red dot on here, but I do have backup iron sights. So you have a safety switch on the side, and your controls are pretty easy to learn, but you do need to practice with it a good bit and make sure that you're proficient with the rifle. The range on here is going to be longer than a shotgun, um, actually longer than the 3030 as well, but the cartridge is going to have uh, a little bit less energy because of the fact that it's you know, much smaller and lighter. But there's often, on these rifles, they're set up to put your own accessories on there. You can mount a light, um, forward grips, whatever you want to do. So these rifles are very popular for that reason. They are, I've heard people refer to them as Legos for men um, or women. That's the beauty of these. My wife can shoot this rifle just as easily as I can. It's very modular. You can set it up to fit you very easily. So these guns are going to be a little bit more expensive on average than the other two that I showed you. And they do have uh, some inherent things you need to think about, like magazines. This gun is designed to work with a detachable magazine, whereas the other two are both tube-fed guns. So the magazine for the shotgun and the 3030 is attached to the gun, while the magazine for this gun is an external box magazine. So you would definitely, I would advise, if you're going to go this route, to have multiple of these. Um, as far as how long these last, I have some that I've been shooting for years. They still hold up just fine. So there is that. Um, the 5.56 five, round that this gun uses is... It's a remarkable round for uh, defensive purposes. It's a great round for hunting small to medium game. Uh, wouldn't be my first choice to go up against a black bear or something like that with, but if you have to, you have to, and you have 30 rounds. So with the AK-47, I did not bring mine out here. It shoots a little bit different round. It's also an intermediate rifle cartridge, so it's in between like a full house 30-06 and a, a rimfire. It's going to be similar in length to the 5.56, but instead of being 5.56 millimeters in diameter, it is 7.62. You have some trade-offs as far as uh, distance accuracy and velocity, but the, the round does still pack a punch and is definitely a solid choice. Let's do a little shooting. And we're empty. Now at this point you're probably thinking, you know, I don't, I don't want a long gun, I want something I can carry with me. Um, a handgun, if you will. And I understand that line of thinking. I am the hungry handgunner. After all, I do like shooting handguns. I do think that most people should carry one with them all the time. I say most just because if you're not willing to put in the time, energy, and effort to practice with one, then by carrying one you are a liability. And there is a reason for that. So we'll go ahead and clear this. This is my FN 509 Tactical. I yeah, the most recent recent handgun purchase. So, magazine is out, chamber is clear. This gun does have a pistol red dot slide I put up here and a flashlight down here because it's my other thing. If you're going to carry a pistol, I think it should have a light on it, especially in this day and age. This gun holds 17 rounds plus one in the chamber with its uh, flush fitting magazine. So that's 18 rounds of 9mm. That is 
adequate for self-defense distances um, against two-legged threats, probably some smaller four-legged threats. This gun is not ideal for putting food on the table. Um, this gun has its own inherent accuracy issues at distances out. You know, I routinely shoot at 25 yards. I would say effective yard, uh, effective range, maybe 50 yards if you're lucky. Out past that, it starts getting to be a crapshoot. And then add in the stress of coming under attack or whatever else, that range is going to drop off. So as a personal defense weapon, these are great. As a keep food on the table, um, no, not so much. So this one is chambered in 9mm, which is my favorite pistol cartridge because it's cheap and it's usually abundant. We're going to talk about the ammo shortage here in a second. But with a handgun, it's not as instinctual to shoot a rifle, right? So you have two points of contact on a handgun when you're shooting it. You have your dominant hand, which could be your right hand, could be your left hand, whatever. Dominant hand, and then your support hand. That's it. That's all you have to stabilize that gun. So by that virtue, when you go to something like a long arm of sorts, you have four points of contact. You have your strong hand, or dominant hand, your support hand, your shoulder and your cheek when you bring it down to the stock and get a proper cheek, cheek weld on the gun. So four points contact better than two. I think that's pretty easy to understand. That being said, there are places this will go that those will not. Um, these guns, uh, semi-automatic handguns, are very common. Um, there are a variety of manufacturers out there. I'm not going to get into full-on reviews and which brands to stay away from. Uh, YouTube searches will tell you all that. But the pros to this is I can take it virtually anywhere. Um, a gun like this is something I would carry concealed with a t-shirt. It is not that hard to carry this gun. Now that being said, um, parts, things like that, if I, if I could only have one handgun, this would not be it, the FN 509 Tactical. Things like Glocks, Berettas, um, those are all very common handguns, semi-auto handguns and those parts are going to be available um, in most places whereas this is a newer design uh, less much less common design so uh yeah we're just gonna shoot some steel see how she handles i think i got this hollow sun the rest of the way sighted in so we'll find out if i miss though it's obviously not sighted in because i never miss Slide locks open. I can feel it lock open too. That's cool. Uh, go ahead, put one of the 24 round happy sticks in there. Optics locked up tight. I like that. All right. that swinger to move and it can be a little bit of a challenge. Another good lock open. If there's one thing I've learned since I've started this channel, it's that a lot of you guys think I hate revolvers. That is not the case. Uh, this is one of my favorite guns I own. This is a Ruger GP100 357 Magnum 7 shot. So uh, guns like these are popular um, because they've been around forever and they are uh, pretty reliable. They're not bulletproof like some people believe. These guns can fail and when they do they typically fail in a big way. But on a day-to-day -day basis if you maintain the guns they do hold up well especially made by reputable manufacturers Colt, Ruger, Smith & Wesson. Uh, those are probably the big three and revolver manufacturers here. Now that being said I'm not saying that if you buy another gun you've made a mistake. It's just the commonly accepted whatever. Here's what one of the cartridges looks like. That's a 357 Magnum. Uh, one of the neat things about a 357 Magnum, you can shoot 357 out of it obviously, but you can also safely shoot 38 Special out of this gun. The inverse is not true. I actually have a whole video up on how that works, but the case length on a 357 is a little bit longer 
than that of a 38. So it has more powder, more power, more pressure, whatever you want to think of it as. 38 has less. It's safe to shoot 38 out of a 357. It is not safe to shoot 357 out of a 38. I like revolvers for uh, hunting application. A 357 Magnum can take a deer, does take deer every year. I like them from a hiking perspective because this, where I live, a 357 would be adequate to defend myself from four legged critters. And a 357 was the gold standard for self defense and law enforcement uh, for a very long time until, you know, 9mm started catching up, etc. So this one is a seven shot model, which is a little bit different than um, the traditional six round. So you get one extra round. Is it that big of a deal? No, not really. I thought it was cool and interesting, so that's why I wanted this one. It is a, this gun has been absolutely reliable for me, but this would not be a recommendation I would give you for crap hitting the fan. Number one, just getting into guns, you're going to need to practice. Uh, even 38, which is cheaper than 357 Magnum, is still going to be pretty expensive, whereas, especially compared to things like 9mm, 45. We'll talk about that more here in a second. Number two is you get six or seven shots. A revolver has two methods of being fired. The first is going to be double action, which is where when I pull the trigger, the hammer comes all the way back and then comes down. So that trigger press is pulling, is performing two actions, a double action. It is both cocking the hammer and releasing it. The other method you can use is to manually cock the hammer, in which case you can see even the trigger now is much further up than it was in double action mode. You have to pull from here single action your trigger is all the way back there it's a much lighter crisper trigger pull trigger is performing one single action which is namely releasing the hammer these guns should be learned how to be shot or you should learn how to shoot these guns double action you should learn how to do that smoothly that takes a lot of work um, that's not something you learn overnight and by takes a lot of work I mean it's going to take a lot of time and ammo uh, which is an added cost, which is time may not be something you think you have the luxury of right now. So, <clears throat> this is a good in addition to, not a good as my main gun. Alright, let's shoot. This single action trigger, I haven't shot it in a while. Of course I would miss. So, um, yeah, I missed like half of those. Um, you guys that have been watching me for a while know that I do miss, especially with guns that I don't train with. And this is definitely one I don't train with. You see the super tactical speed reload right here? Jerry Mikulik would be envious. There's actually one of the issues. No, it just didn't go all the way down. All right, never mind. Can't tell where I'm hitting. There we go. It is, uh, it's fun. It is a fun gun to shoot. There's something about a revolver that just never really, I would say gets old. They have gotten old. <laughs> we'll do this cylinder and then uh, I won't torture you guys with any more footage of my abysmal performance here. Ammunition is going to be a bit of a touchy subject because everybody thinks that they're a better marksman than they are. Um, and that's true of guys that have been shooting for 70 years and guys that have just started shooting last week. So what you can do on a static range or a flat range shooting at paper is important. Um, that is where you develop your fundamentals, your trigger control, sight alignment, all that. It's very important. It's something you need to do. Shooting under stress, whether that's... Uh, a person or an animal attacking you, things like that, 
there's plenty of evidence out there that shows that we do not shoot that well when we're under stress. Hell, even time stress at competition throws people off. So if you think you need five rounds, you probably need ten, etc. Um, that's part of why the guns that I carry for self-defense often have a magazine capacity of 15 plus. It's not that I'm a terrible shot and I think, oh my god, I'm going to miss all my shots. It's that I know there's the potential for me to need those, those are extra rounds. Now, ammunition, as we're talking about today, is going to be a function of how much you should have on hand. Um, there's people that have 25,000 rounds for every caliber they own, and there's people that have a few boxes for every caliber they own. Somewhere in the middle uh, is what I would recommend. Now, I know that I'm kind of hurting myself by saying this. Uh, ammo right now, there's a lot of shortages everywhere, which I think is because people are realizing, number one, this coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever, is a little bit more than we initially thought it was going to be, and there's so many unknowns. Uh, as humans, we don't do well with unknowns, especially my generation. We are so used to being able to pull our phones out and get an answer to whatever we want right away. And with this, there's there's unknowns. There is no, hey, things are gonna get better on this date. Hey, this is what you can do to 100% cure yourself if you get it. Um, here's what it looks like if somebody has it. They're still figuring out symptoms. They're still figuring out how to differentiate those symptoms from other illnesses, how to test for it, etc. So I'm not going to talk about that too much. Uh, much more qualified people than me are speaking on the COVID-19 thing. Uh, but that that outbreak and that pandemic of fear, in addition to pandemic of an actual pathogen, is what has led us to the situation we're in now. I do want to say that if you find yourself buying a firearm for the first time, regardless of your stance on guns prior to this, welcome. Welcome to the gun community. Um, most people, the overwhelming majority of people that are into guns, would be more than happy to help you if you let them help you. Please take what they say, uh, especially if they're qualified and they've been doing it for a while. Please take what they say with some authority. Please listen, especially if they give you reasons for why they're giving you such advice. They can help you avoid buyer's remorse or worse still, a tragic outcome because you bought a subpar piece of equipment. I think it's going to be very important for you to get out and practice. Seek qualified instruction especially if it's within your means to do so. Um, if it is outside of your means to do so, I guarantee you, you can probably find a friend who is more trained, more experienced than you, and learn what you can. Uh, learn what you can from who you can. There's a variety of YouTube videos, and I'll go ahead and plug some of them that offer some excellent training. Um, John Lovell with Warrior Poet Society, uh, Aaron Callen with Sage Dynamics, Clint Smith with Thunder Ranch, uh, he's going to be a bit abrasive, so if you have sensitive ears, uh, Clint Smith may not be for you, but I don't think that's a problem for most of you. There's just an abundance of stuff out there that you can look up and, and learn different things, different drills to practice at the range to improve your proficiency, different standards to hold yourself to, gear reviews, things like that. I've got a lot of gear reviews on my channel. Uh, most of them I've tried to keep geared to newer shooters. Uh, they may still be overwhelming at times, and if they are, drop a question uh, in a comment, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. So, I hope that this helps you guys out. I am sad that the circumstances are what they are for you to have gotten to this point, but welcome to the community. And again, if there's any questions I can answer for you guys, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. So, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Get to shooting. And I'll see you next time.